Hi, everyone. Uh, we are calling the meeting to order at 7.05 p.m. And we have Joanne. We have Wayne. We have Sarah. And we have our guest, Patrick. And as everyone knows, I'm Chris. So today, Patrick is going to give us information on how the library is functioning as part of the DEI for the town of Hadley and the community. So he does not mind answering any questions. He also has information that he'd like to share about a survey for the library as well. So we're going to have open reflections before we start with Patrick. Do you have any open reflections? Um, we had on there that we can review the mission statement. Okay, did anyone want to read that? We did hand it out to each other. We do have a paper copy. Did you want a mission statement to know of our mission as it's being? I, I know, I do know the general. Okay. I think I need to. Mm -hmm. We better move on. To okay, yeah, I think so, we, can, we can go right ahead, I think. Okay. I read it too. <laughs> right. let's just Thank you for texting, forward. Joanne. In accordance with that, do we have a motion to approve the minutes? I mean, I can approve, uh, mo move to approve I mean, move to appro approve the minutes, sorry. Uh, I second. Since you wrote them, I'll move to approve them. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I will second it. Okay, great. Okay. Minutes are approved. Are All, right. All right. All um, right. Now we, we can vote to approve them. The, I don't, we just did. I, yeah, I don't Joanne think. votes yes. Wayne votes yes. Right. I, votes yeah. yes and, I don't think we need right. to do that. So, okay. And now and we I vote yes. to Patrick. So, Patrick, did you want to speak about the library information first? Sure. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I, I did want to mention that along with several other departments um, and committees, we the library is also running a series of surveys. We're doing three weeks of surveys in August. Uh, the first week is concluding tomorrow. Um, and these surveys concern... Well, the reason that we're doing the surveys is that we're currently formulating uh, an updated long-range plan for the library. So the long-range plan generally covers about five years, mm -hmm. um, and it kind of creates a roadmap for our operations, for what we prioritize and how we, you know, how we think about the future and what the, you know, what the community's um, stated needs are. So we, in order to do that, we rely on surveys and focus groups and things like that. So that's what this is about, and it's on uh, a number of different subjects. The first one, the first week right now uh, is about staffing and services the second week, which will start this weekend, will be about the library as community commons. So mm. um, things like collections, programming, um, meeting spaces. So we just want to hear about how people use the library or don't use the library, what, what they use it for, what they'd like to use it for, mm. um, what, you know, what is important to them in the collections, um, those kinds of things. Mm. Um, and then the last week, we're going to be talking about something that we kind of are loosely calling resiliency, which is thinking about the future, fundraising, um, volunteerism in the library, all those sorts of things. That's excellent, because that goes to show how the library is contributing to the DEI by asking people to fill out this survey and finding out what the community is wanting um, from the library. So yeah. that's, that's a, I mean, mm -hmm. it's excellent. So when does the week start? Does it start on Saturday or am I it's, it's starting, I mean, we're launching kind of late in the day on Friday okay. uh, to just sort of get it rolling over the weekend rather than waiting till sort of late in the day on Monday. Okay. That's just the way it seems to work best. Um, so this will conclude somewhere in the afternoon, um, probably around five tomorrow. And then um, a little couple hours later, probably by the time we close at seven, the part two will be launched and the links will be available. Okay, so because of the reason why you're doing that is because on Fridays you close at seven yep. and Mondays you open at two. Right. And that's why you're starting on Friday. So this yep. way you can oh. start basically for Monday. Well, yeah, Saturday, or over the weekend. Over I mean, it's, the weekend. A, it's announced, but I mean, it's it's more visible over the web than it is right. in person. I mean, there are there are these you know flyers in the library and in a few public places, but I think most people are finding out about it over the web. Great, and through you know the town now blast, etc. Good, good, yeah. good. Um, does anyone have any questions about the library and and how the new library may affect or help the community? I just love the library. <laughs> well, I know you do, Sarah. You I knew I was. Gonna, I yeah. knew I was going to love this new yeah. building from the time I saw the drawings. Yeah. In spite of being an old building lover, mm -hmm. I is a new building that I love. 
Yeah, it really, yeah. really works. It's beautiful and it's functional. I, I mean, I think we're all very happy with it, yeah. with how it turned out. And I think generally the feedback that we've heard from people has been, you know, overwhelmingly yeah. positive about you know, the, the feeling that you get by coming into the library, the fact that you can spend a lot of time there comfortably mm -hmm. um, and do, you know, whatever it is that you come there to do, whether it's study or mm -hmm. read or, you know, read a newspaper, catch up with neighbors, bring grandkids or kids to play in the children's room. Um, you know, teenagers come after school. It's it's a very busy place. Yeah. yeah I love seeing the, that teen room full of kids doing stuff. It's oh, great. Yeah. Kind of yeah. a, a real it's, hangout, a real it's third place. Is, yeah. It's a real third place, which yep. we need so badly. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 good to see. Mark, it looks like he's yeah. Do you have my him? audio before I muted? I didn't hear a thing. Ooh. And and let him know I saw half of his eye. Do you so I didn't, I didn't even see <laughs> Can you hear me? Half of his eye. So I see him looking with his glasses into the camera. Oh yes. Can you hear me at, at all? Because I'm speaking. About the new library as a I think it's wonderful. And I actually, my father in law volunteered that I should run for library committee. And I said, I hadn't thought about that. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't get elected if I run. So I put my name in and I was elected. <laughs> oh, six votes. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm in, and uh, I'm very impressed with both the library and the library committee, which is very serious and obviously been working for quite a long time. And coming to know the library, I just get more impressed every time yeah. I'm there and deal with Nick Patrick's doing an amazing job. And uh, it, yeah, so I'm learning. Yeah, it's wonderful. And, uh, do you have anything to ask? Yeah, I do. I just want to know, Mark, is he hearing us on? Or I, I can say <laughs> while Joanne is getting ready, I'm, I'm with Sarah about going to the old library and then seeing the plans. And when I did see the plans, I couldn't even imagine it. It just was so enormous and it was just so grand. And, and I say to myself, is this a dream because the old library was functional, but this library, the blueprint was just so amazing. And to see it actually be completed with the, the way the front room faces the street and the, the way the sunlight oh, comes yeah. in and the chairs by that window with the table, you can literally come in there and do studies or read and have that sunlight just right behind you. There's rows and rows of books. There's a yeah. room where you can donate books and DVDs and CDs. You can also buy or donate uh, any DVDs, CDs, or books that you may have, you can donate them as well, or, or you can purchase and donate, you know, 50 cents to it. Um, also, there are plenty of events that the library has that really is contributing to the community. And just, I think it was last week, they had Zoo Day. Right? Yeah. And a person came in and, it, and he was the bug man. Yeah, he was the bug man, and I brought my two and a half year old grandson, and he had an, a large collection of bugs. And oh. I thought that they were not alive, but they were all alive. And when my grandson seen the big giant millipede, he said, "I'm going to the library." We're going to which is the children's room. Right. So then we went to the children's room, and a few minutes after that, another family came in and said, "Well, he brought out the hissing cockroaches." <laughs> so we had to leave because uh -huh. the kids, but it was it was very informational and, and it was just wonderful how the man actually related to the children. He got on the floor and portrayed himself as being a bug. It was just hilarious and the children loved it. So these events that the lab library put on are are awesome. I, that's all I can say. They're just great. And if you ever need to to reserve a room to have something, you would just reach out to Patrick and he's so accommodating. He would make sure that he finds a way to accommodate and, and have it come. 
you know, have it be where you can use the library for other resources besides reading and, mm -hmm. and catching up with friends and the teenager room. They have these large chairs to sit in. They have computers. The door can close. It's just very private. It's wonderful. Yeah. yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah, I love that teen room because it's full of kids yeah. and they're moving around and talking and carrying on and you don't hear them unless the door opens exactly. it's very well. So they can, they can just, so you yeah. yeah, but it's not like if they were in a, in the yeah. same room with the, if it was all one big room oh, and yeah. they were carrying on, people would be shushing them, yeah. which is a real damper. Let's be for young people. Yeah. It's, yeah. They it's big enough and there's enough separation for everyone to have their space. Yes. And I think particularly with the YA room, which, you know, we had, I mean, first of all, I, I I was very fond of the old library. I loved, I've been mm -hmm. working there, worked there for mm -hmm. more than 10 years um, yeah. you know, by the time we moved up to the, into the new one. So, um, so I loved, I loved working there and I love, I love that building like so many people do. Mm -hmm. um, but there were so many limitations on, you know, there were so many factors that were, that were limiting our operation and our ability to provide like, you know, modern, a modern level of service, you know, what, what, community members yeah. could reasonably expect from their community library. So we were challenged in that. And, you know, it's nice to see so many people from the community that for years had started using other, other libraries, whether it was the Forbes or mm -hmm. the Jones or, you know, mm -hmm. Sunderland, or whether it was because it was closer or because the library just had, had more amenities and what they wanted. It was nice to see, and it is continues to be nice to see people coming back People from the community coming back to their own to their own library. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, we get people all the time that come in and say, and it's been almost four years. We're coming up on four years now, oh, yeah. and we get still get people that come in and be like, and say, I, I this is the first time I'm coming in. And yeah, like, welcome. You know, yeah, it's yeah. great to have have people come in, and and thank you for your kind words, Crystal, about um, about the welcoming nature of the library because I think that's that more than anything that is my goal for management of the library for people to feel that when they come into the library as community members, I want them to feel proud of the fact that we did this as a community and that they have this asset in their community to, to enjoy um, and to utilize mm -hmm. for their, for their purposes, whatever it is that they, they want to do, you know, so people come in and they, you know, they tell us what they want more of and they tell us how they want to use the library. We get people coming in all the time with things that we never thought of. Um, you know, for uses for the for the meeting rooms in the community, you know, the large community room mm -hmm. to do all kinds of things. And so, as much as possible, the the default answer is yes. Um, and then we try to figure it out. And it's very rarely that you know that we have to say no because something is just incompatible with you know with the mission or or safety or something else. Um, but it's really we're, we try to be as accommodating as as possible to what the community wants the library to be. I think I'll add that um, I, uh, when my daughter was younger, we got over there more often. Um, I'm busy with my business and different things and, and didn't get over as much. I, I, in the old library, I did the ukulele with yeah. Luna. Yeah. Um, but when it, it came out that, that there was a desire to build a new library, uh, I love old buildings. I love all that. But the piece that I felt was I, I often want to go to events at the Jones Library in that room they had downstairs. Mm -hmm. And, my, and the, the, your your statement, community commons, that's really big. You know, no longer do we all bump to each other at the post office or at the grocery, corner grocery exactly. store. That I grew up in a small town where you would bump into people just going about your day-to-day -day business. So the idea of building a, a building that was going to be a place to meet and gather yeah. mm -hmm. is it is awesome. And that's why every town meeting thing, yes, yes, yes. I was all, all for that. Um, I've, I have been over I, about a year and a half ago is when I was one of the ones that said, you know, I haven't been in here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but I love hearing that there's events there and I have been to a few events there and I like to go to more. Mm -hmm. And so I, I have a strong sentiment for that, you know, the use of those rooms and, the, yeah. and, the, and hearing that all the kids are loving it. I haven't. I don't have a young child to bring there, but I, I hear Crystal and others. It's got to be great. It's got to be great. Yeah. Yeah. My I found a video because I I use so much storage recording and taking pictures of my grandson <laughs> that I literally found a video of him crawling 
in the library. He he was not walking. Well, now he's running around, jumping over three, so good. Yeah. And he was crawling, and I was like, wow. As he grows older, he's going to look back at this and say, I've been coming to this library since before yeah. I was walking. Yeah. And that's what the library means, longevity yeah. and, and inclusion. Mm -hmm. No matter what you want out of the library, you can always go and you can feel comfortable. And looking back on how long you've come to the library as a child or an adult, it, it's wonderful. And also, I believe, uh, Patrick, you have scholarships as well. We do. Yeah, the, friend, the Friends of the Library offer um, mm -hmm. a scholarship. They um, do that in the spring of the, the spring of each school year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been doing that for two years. I think it's two years now. Mm -hmm. I used to be two or three years. That's, that's wonderful yeah. as well. They uh, do believe the Friends of the Library choose according to certain aspects. They choose out of all of the uh, applications that they receive. Now, last year was one person, this year it was two, two people that need and and war it's warranted to provide them with a thousand dollar scholarship. That's great. And, and that's amazing. That's also all part of the library. Mm -hmm. You know, library is so inclusive of so many things. And it's mm -hmm. just, I just wish more people would come out to the library mm -hmm. and just, just visit. Just see what the library has to offer. Mm -hmm. I mean, bring your grandchildren, your children, even come alone. And, and as Sarah was saying, in the YA, the young adult room, mm -hmm. they get along so well. They get along so well. Yeah, you, you, yeah you, you can walk past the room and, and they're like at a slumber party. They're just yeah. all laughing and, and getting along mm -hmm. so well. You know, and, and that's, that's what yeah. we like to see. Same thing with the children's room. Mm -hmm. You see all the little children playing with yeah. each other. The parents are there talking. It's just, I like the library and, and yeah. the, the way it applies to the DEI is it is inclusive, it is diverse, mm -hmm. and it is definitely equitable for the town of Hattie. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hearing a treasure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it really is. Like, my internet sure. has been cutting it out, like, almost on a weekly basis mm -hmm. at this point. Right. <laughs> and, you know, I just can't count how many times I have just grabbed my tablet and driven up to the library and sat in the parking lot yeah, so yeah. I can see my email. <laughs> lots, lots of people do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's good. It's yeah, good. I mean, in the it's past, it was like yeah. when, I, when my camera was still working, I needed to bring my laptop to the library to upload photos to Flickr because my mm -hmm. internet is not that good. Mm -hmm. Even when it's working, it's not that good. Yeah, so that's really important. Mm -hmm. yeah. And those programs with the conservation district, those changed my life. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm mowing less. I planted native plants. I'm learning to identify a lot more plants in my yard, which yeah. ones can stay and which ones need to go. Yeah. 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 This summer is completely different from last year. That was the, those those programs were. I was not actually at the programs because most of this took place on Saturdays, and I'm mm -hmm. not here on Saturdays. But um, but as an outgrowth of of that collaboration with the conservation district, that's what allowed us to do you know the the kind of revamped plantings in front yeah. of yeah. the library. It was through that collaboration that we were yeah. able to do that essentially at no cost um, to the library, and it was yeah. it was amazing. And the volunteer. I mean, it's not the first time that we've had a big volunteer turn out to do a big job like that. Um, but I was scared stiff ahead of that, that I would be there like all day and all night with, you know, like two people. <laughs> but we had a great turnout. We had a ton, a ton of volunteers that came and put those plants in the ground. And we were done by lunchtime. Yeah. And I, I mean, I was still exhausted, but I couldn't believe that we got it done that quickly because I thought that was going to be a monumental job and we got it done so quickly and, and yeah. so easily. I'm sorry I missed out on that. I planned on being there, but I had like five things. I was like, okay, so at nine o'clock I'll be at the library and at 10 o'clock I'll be at this and at 11 o'clock I'll be at that. And it was like, yeah, good luck. You get out of the house at 10 <laughs> if you're lucky. <laughs> so, but yeah, I'm glad that a lot of people turned out. Yeah, because I would have felt really bad <laughs> if I hadn't made it and there weren't a lot of people. I have to admit that I was not, when the library, the new building was being planned, those years when it was being, um, when the transition was happening, I was really not aware. I, I was not as invested in the town as I am now. Um, 
As you see what's going on in Amherst with their library project, was this anything like that? <laughs> uh, well, obviously uh, not, because we have a new building. Yeah. And they she don't. probably was very careful. Yeah, uh, yeah no, this is nothing in their place is like is like Amherst. Amherst is, yeah, is one of a kind. A different animal. I, I used to work at the Jones Library, so I have some little oh. insight. Um, okay. It's been a long time though. I haven't worked there, and and at this point, it's been like 15, 16 years since I yeah. was there. So many things have changed. They have, you know, totally new. They have a new director. I'm mm -hmm. sure their, you know, their trustees have totally turned over since then. But, um, but yeah, that's a very challenging. That's a very challenging project because they're trying to hold on to yeah. um, an historic building yeah. and make it work. And again, that we looked when we looked at the Goodwin. You know, we looked at the Goodwin in the same way because there there was a strong community sentiment to hold on to that building as the library and expand it. Mm -hmm. um, but it was like the Jones, it was very constrained by, you know, its placement. It's on a, exactly. it's on a corner yeah. lot, so you can't go in those two directions. Yeah. The hooker school across the driveway was there, so that that you couldn't really go in that direction. The you know, the, the the church, the V1 um yeah. V1 yeah, yeah. Yeah. now. Right that is on the other side of it. So that you really couldn't go anywhere. No. Um, and we looked at some really uh, interesting possibilities because they, you know, because they came up, because they came up in, in, in meetings and people said, well, couldn't you look at perhaps um, doing something like having a breezeway or a walkway from the Goodwin to the, mm -hmm. to the hooker school and preserve like the front part of the hooker school. And, you know, we looked at that and of course what, what came out of that was that to do that, it would be not only exorbitantly expensive mm -hmm. to make to 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 make use of these two buildings in this way that aren't even connected, but it would be impossible to supervise. Mm -hmm. It would you would have to have much you know much higher levels of staffing to make sure that the building was safe um, and and you know always under under supervision. So that quickly went by the wayside, um, and you know I think. From this, I, I learned that as a rule of thumb, it's it's going to be less expensive to build a new building than it is to retrofit a building that maybe not all buildings, but a building that's sort of not compatible with again a modern usage. Mm -hmm. You know, again, a good one will would have and probably still will require an elevator, mm -hmm. things like that, and those things are very expensive. Whereas if you build all on one level, like the senior center or the library, you don't have to worry about those construction costs or the ongoing maintenance costs of elevators that are constantly, you know, breaking down and people being stuck. Yeah. So it's good to not have to deal with those things. Yeah. Um, so the, as far as the Jones go, I, I don't really know what to say about it other than that, you know, it's a very challenging project yeah. by nature of yeah. what they're, what they're trying to, to, to transform. Yeah. Was the know, process and, here relatively smooth compared with that? I, I was, Comparatively, I would say yes. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't necessarily That's easy. True. It wasn't necessarily assured, but um, but we just kind of we you know we we as a as a group that you know my, I mean I was here as an employee, so to me I didn't have a dog in the fight. I don't live in town, so if the town had decided we don't want to do this, you know, so be it. Mm -hmm. But the trustees felt very confident that this was a worthy worthy project, worthy of pursuing. Um, and that the money was out there from the state to make it worthwhile to try. And if the town decided to do it or not do it, you know, again, so be it. But um, but it was a compelling, we were able to make a compelling case. Mm -hmm. And I think ultimately the, the circumstances by which there are a lot of funny things that, about that that I won't get into because it's very long and convoluted. Yeah. <laughs> but by virtue of the fact that out of this process came also you know this beautiful new senior center yeah um i mean that's that's a great outcome yeah so that that's when we really started to kind of be cooking with gas one you know once the the senior community was on board and said wait we have something to gain from this as well something that we wanted for a long time oh, because yeah. you know the as, as much as people i'm going to be very careful in saying this but as much as people were very fond of the old hooker school because a lot of people went to that school yeah you know yeah. the situation for the seniors over there was not ideal yeah. nice. um and and so and i'm sure there are not that many people that wish they could go back to that circumstance versus this one you know 
Yeah. So it, it really was, um, that was the game changer once we started talking yeah. about both projects side by side. And no, also knowing that if one didn't go forward, the other one wasn't going to go forward either. There was no way to kind of just push one and then mm -hmm. let the other one die on the vine. They had to both yeah. go together and succeed. I didn't mean to move things away from the oh. wonderful state of the library today, which is really what we're here to talk about. But it was interesting to me how it came yeah. to be. And it was all a positive thing. It was a really fascinating process, and I have no, um, I had no background in it. And I, I mean, aside, I have a library background, but I didn't have a background in construction or anything <laughs> to do with that. And I had never even contemplated, you know, wanting to do that. It wasn't something it could nothing could have been further from my mind. But thankfully, I was dropped in right at the beginning of the process, so I, I didn't get dropped in the, in the middle. I got dropped in sort of right at the beginning. Yeah. So like everyone else involved, I, I got to learn as we went along. And, and it was you know, nice to know that, comforting to know that there were so many libraries that had gone before, so many communities had done yeah. this before, that yeah. we didn't have to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. We just needed to kind of like learn from people's successes and from their mistakes and try to, you know, try to do the best that we could mm -hmm. to sell the project and come up with a good project that everyone would feel good about. I'm not a student of these kinds of projects, but I know enough to know that that's not always the case. That yeah. people don't always come to that conclusion and say, no. let's agree and right, move forward. Exactly. And, and it's a credit to those who did that mm -hmm. we have this. I'm a, I'm a great fan of, how to put this, old library buildings mm -hmm. fascinate me. Yeah. I have a collection of photographs, mm -hmm. especially in New England. Yeah. You drive around anywhere, yeah. you can see in the middle of a tiny little town, you can see this magnificent building. Yeah, yeah. I can And it, it's, it, it just has always made me very happy. And mm -hmm. um, and this one does too. So thank you um, for your part of this. And mm -hmm. we have a wonderful resource in the library. Yes, I know. Yes. I'm just getting to know. So it, it's wonderful. And, yeah. and I, I have pictures of when the library was, uh, excuse me, when the school was in the process of being torn down. Mm. I have pictures of when it was just nothing. I have pictures of when it was being built. I have pictures of when it was finished because I wanted to keep that information prevalent mm. so that when my grandson gets older and he's in the library and he's to him, it's going to be something that he's accustomed to. I can mm. show him how it all started, you know, so he can appreciate yes, it even wonderful. more. And you're like, wow, I can't believe that I started walking in this library. And <laughs> it's amazing how time goes so fast. Mm -hmm. And if you're not there taking pictures, it goes right by you. You might be fostering a future library trustee. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Never know. Because yeah. he Certainly said patient. library before he could really talk. Barbary. <laughs> <laughs> and I know what it meant, but if someone else heard it, what is he saying? Yeah. Library. No, yeah. Library. So now he said, I don't go to the library, and all I have to do is say it's closed. So he said, okay, tomorrow. <laughs> tell, him to say, tell him to take the survey so we yeah. can hear what he, he, what he wants. Right. And he uh, what would he like to Every day from 10 to right. 7. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. from a clean mind. That, that's excellent. Uh, I appreciate you coming, Patrick. I really yes. do. You've informed us with a whole lot. And uh, hopefully, anyone watching this video will learn more about the library and, and its resources and, and how it came about and the construction and so forth and the affiliation with the senior center i don't think too many people yeah. know about that as right. well maybe they just thought it was two separate um contracts whereas both had to be in agreement with it in order for it to be possible so yeah. i i do appreciate you coming and taking your time out to be megan there. wanted to sure. ask a question oh, she couldn't oh that's right oh she yes a, she's a social worker yes and she's aware that in some libraries especially in larger communities there are social workers that are available on whatever timely basis they can make themselves available. It might be a couple of hours a week mm -hmm. on one day or something like that to help people access the social resources sure. that they might need. Yeah. And she just does, you know, she's like wondering, is that something that Hadley could use or would like or could explore? Um, 
so I'm not I'm not well versed in in you know those issues, but mm -hmm. in theory, I mean, mm -hmm. as far as the libraries part of that, as far as a place for people to to meet, I mean, obviously mm -hmm. we have meeting rooms, and we have places you know that people can sit quietly and and have conversations mm -hmm. um, with people like that. Um, I, I I can imagine that it would be something that would be useful for members of the community. We've certainly had people um, who visited the library that that. Um, had had certain issues of, of mm -hmm. you know, being unhoused or mm -hmm. you know having um, substance abuse issues or other uh, mental health issues. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I can certainly imagine that um, that those issues exist in town, and I think you know the library could be a, a place for mm -hmm. for some of those meetings to take place. If, okay. I mean, if, if you're looking for a public public safe neutral space for people to to do those kinds of things, um, I don't see why not. Okay. okay. If she would like to put something in writing and mm -hmm. send it to me, I would at least bring it to the library committee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, idea. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's it, it, in, in some ways it's as easy as um, I mean, if they were, we were going to do something formal where there were like some set hours or something like that, I mean, then yes, I think we would you know we want to sit down and, and talk about how to make that happen. But mm -hmm. it's as easy, at, you know, for a social worker to to just call us up if there's someone in need of a space. We have people call us calling us every day. Mm -hmm. I need a space to do X, Y, and Z, to, to mm -hmm. do a tutoring session, to do oh, wow. you know, to do some sort yeah. of a, a, a something with a client, um, to do tell you know, to do uh, you know, Zoom meetings or, or or what have you. So this is just one more thing. I mean, we have we have um, some of the some of the, the state reps come in and do their office hours oh. at the library. Wow. So this is just one more one more thing that people could do and it really is just a matter of you know calling us up and saying do you have a space for me to meet with mm -hmm. um you know um, meet with someone and of course yeah. the answer would be yes if it's, if it's available we, you know we yeah. find the time for them to be able cool. to do that so that's that's yeah. great I, I, welcome to. Well, yeah. I do believe be... megan may have mentioned um that this would be something she would come together with the library as maybe a paid something where she or whomever would be paid to represent the library. So if there was um, anyone who needed any type of assistance and help, they can say, well, the social worker will be here Monday at three o'clock. Yeah. And that's when they would come. So that's why that's a yeah. good idea with you, Wayne, for Megan to write something up to you. Yeah. So you can bring it to the trustees to see if it's something mm -hmm. that they'd be willing to go forth with. Yeah. I mean, that's why, uh, yeah. I mean, I I can see this being something that somewhere under the you know the umbrella of town services. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we're we're sort of already trying to figure out how to to maintain the service levels that we need to just for the services that we currently right. offer. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, and we're year over year, we're, you know, substantially busier than we were the year before, yeah. but we don't have uh, substantially larger staff. So as far as anything that's a completely new initiative, as far as services go, we would have, we would be fairly conservative in, in taking that on. Mm -hmm. However, if the town were saying, well, yes, this is important. I mean, cause I know that, that yeah. like, for instance, public safety has some, um, some social workers that, that work with them oh, and, right. you know, go out on calls. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure we've had a visit, um, from possibly from a social worker working with the Hadley police department that came over to, to talk to someone that was, in some sort of a crisis and um you know so there th those services may already be in existence at the town level and it may be more a matter of just where where are they able to be accessed by members of the public right. and also you know are, are we providing enough of them that might be the question to, to because also no one at the library certainly not myself i mean there's no one really with a, any kind of background in social work or the, those right. kinds of issues exactly. so in, in yes. terms of yeah. supervising someone in that situation, I don't know that we would be really qualified to, to mm -hmm. do that, but I think there are professionals in town that would be and mm -hmm. possibly already are. Mm -hmm. So I think the conversation probably starts there and we just offer potentially a venue mm -hmm. right. for right. Right. I think activities. Megan's thing came from, you know, because of course in larger cities, there are more people who are unhoused or in mm -hmm. crisis or needing help. And they are, if they're already going to the library because it's that safe third space, 
if there's somebody there who can help them access the yeah. services that they're entitled to. Yeah, I mean, the, they that, have the to idea go to some other place and know about it. Ahead of the time. idea of like having office hours or something yeah. like that for, for yeah. I mean, that's right. very appealing and very, yeah. that can really work because it just makes someone, you know, that's doing this work more visible right. and more available right. to just on a touchy subject, on something that's yeah. difficult to talk about. To, for someone to just sort of casually come up and, and right. you know start yeah, it, talking it rather than you know having yeah. to yeah. you know struggle over how do I how do I articulate this how do I send put this in how an do email I, or, how do I get myself yeah. to that office that's right. not on the bus route right. or whatever right. yeah it's right. right there the yeah. right. basically so, wow. I think Megan would want to determine on if she would because she is she did say she's very busy and she yeah. wouldn't be able to um, yeah but I'm quite sure yeah. she may have. Uh, peers that can actually do it but the, the the avenue and the route to take is yes you can have the room for a certain time but as far as the funding coming from the library to be here is something that they right. would speak to the town about right yeah because that's really not yeah. something that we're, yeah we're, exactly we're, we yeah. don't really have the, yeah and that's what she wanted to, to know to, if it would be possible. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. She needed to write a proposal. Yeah. That's yeah. what I would yeah. I would say. So it might be the place to go, it might not be. Right. Hopefully she's watching, she'll watch this because she was unable to attend and she will get the information okay. of where to go and how to do it. And as Wayne said, she maybe want to write up a proposal or whomever mm -hmm. that she would include or refer. And then it can take the steps from there. Yeah. But the library is more than willing to provide the safe space if they didn't yeah. want to come in and make it known through an email or on the sign mm -hmm. outside that there will be a town social worker or such and such here Absolutely. to speak to you. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. That would be excellent. So hopefully the information is out there and, and it's quite clear on what the steps yeah. are there. Yeah. Cool. Have you had people come in to get out of the hot weather during that hot spell? I we, do, we do. We and we have acted as a, an official, you know, cooling that's cooling what center yes, or that's what what I for the for the town, um, along I think along with the senior center and well, is it public? I think public safety that acts as that as well. I'm not sure if there are any other yeah. sites, but but yeah, we definitely you have, do have had people yeah. coming in. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. it's great. Yeah. Right. It's come to my right. it's, it's come to me over the past several years that you know our litigious society and our um, argumentative society these days mm -hmm. that librarians and libraries are one of the last places where they're just there to help mm -hmm. and they're not there to preach or to lecture but to help and mm -hmm. there are not many organizations or people like that anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, ah. Very, very few. And mm, religious organizations, of course, might do that, but even religious organizations now have, have a cap on that. Have yeah. A cap or a purpose. A political yeah, purpose. yeah. And so I, I find it very moving that libraries are service organizations in the best sense of that word. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe one of the last remaining ones oh. in our society. And yeah, the library is going to be there and only get better. Mm -hmm. I've never heard of a library that wasn't welcoming. Mm -hmm. That's right. No matter the age. Mm -hmm. And the workers in the library make it even more welcoming mm -hmm. with their attitudes mm -hmm. and their characteristics. It's it, There is no way to feel uninvited when you go into the happy library. I mean, the library is welcoming. People come in, they say hi to you. People leave, they hold the door for you. Mm -hmm. It's just going in and out. You still feel welcome. And, and that's what a good library should make you feel. Yeah, it should make you feel that way. Mm -hmm. It makes me think that all the, the people, there's more and more research showing how people are lonely and isolated. Mm -hmm. If they have transportation, do they know that this is a place they can do? It's just people around. And just sometimes just knowing people around and hearing their voices. Mm -hmm. I guess you can stop and talk to them. But the yeah, few times I have been in there, I come to the staff at the desk. And I, the first time I went in, one of them said, well, let me give you a tour. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't remember her name, but she works there full time. You probably do. Yeah. <laughs> You know, very yeah. nice. I asked about a certain book I was interested in. She found it and I took it out. 
Yeah, that's 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 yeah. what I mean. You're right, though. Yeah. If more people had access to transportation, mm -hmm. I think it would it would just it would mm -hmm. assist the community, especially especially the elder community, in mm -hmm. feeling more inclusive. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and there are a lot of uh, elderly people that are isolated because they have no more family. And they don't want to go out because they don't feel a need to do so. And these days you can order food shopping online. You can do everything online. So there really isn't a need. And some people really do need that physical contact because yeah. that's important. Yeah, it really is. You know, that's important. And hopefully in the future, there will be a way to accommodate those that can't make it to the library. Well, I should mention on that note that we do offer um, home delivery to, to patrons who can't get out, whether you... you know, uh -huh broke your toe or whether you just, you know, you know, you're in a long-term situation where you can't, you know, you, you don't have the ability to get to the library. So it, it's just a, as easy as reaching out. There's no process. You just call us and tell us what you need. And we, you know, either get a volunteer or one of the staff runs it over. So, but just going back to, to the point, I, I think I have worked in a lot of different libraries in a lot of different settings over the years. And I just want to say that I do think the library and, and the wonderful nature, I, I do think that, I think this is an exceptional library and I think it's an exceptional oh. library because it's in an exceptional community. It's reflective of the community itself. And I think that's what you're, that's what you're seeing in the library. You're just seeing your own community. If there's nothing about it that, you know, we're just there to do our job. And, you know, if it's a pleasant experience, it's because we're having a pleasant day serving you. And, wow. you know, because this is really one of the, you know, friendliest, um, communities that I've ever had the pleasure of working wow, in. Nice, so, Patrick. It's as Thank simple you. as that. Thank you. That's yeah. wonderful to say. And I just had one more thing to say. Is there an online um, or a website that people can access to look at movies that's associated with a library card or maybe they can order a book online? And yeah, the, so the, the library catalog, if you go to the library's um, website under catalogs, the the, um, the CW Mars catalog can be accessed there and you can, using your library card, you can request, you know, move these books. <laughs> you can use it to access um, Overdrive, also known as Libby, which is the, the app that you would put on your phone or even tablet to read an ebook or um, listen to an audio book. Uh, we also offer a service called Canopy, mm -hmm. which yeah. is a film streaming okay. service that um, has a really great selection of documentaries, um, you have foreign films, mm -hmm. um, art house films, kind of stuff. A lot of the kind of things that you would see at like Amher Cinema. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, we offer we have, we have a lot of those a lot of those assets and um, and those were really important and um, a lifeline for a lot of us during during the pandemic because mm -hmm. it was you know we were not able to for a period of time we were not able to lend out physical materials and then when we started learning them out and, wiping them all down yeah, and right. that was, you know, it was it was it was a lot was so good. um yeah. but yeah those 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 resources picked up in in prominence in a way that they really hadn't for us necessarily prior to the pandemic and now that they're you know now that we're through that they're not they're not go they're not going away they're not being used less they're still being used a lot mm -hmm. um and i i think as I often say about this when particularly when people are saying well why do we need to go to the library when all of these things are available online um, my answer to that is that it's just really a great time to be a consumer of, of literature, of film, of media in general, because there's so many ways to, to access it and enjoy it. And the physical book, the popularity of that is also not going away. Yeah. For us, the usage just continues to rise on all fronts for all the things that we offer. So it's just a great time to be able to, to have those choices and, and decide for yourself how you, how you want to enjoy you know, the new Stephen King or a new movie, or you, know, you, you just have, you have a lot of options. And so we're really there to just facilitate that, to, to make sure that people get what they need in the way that they want to enjoy it. And you only need a library card to create an account with Canopy and, and see the remarks, right? Yeah. Once you have your library card, you'll be able to yeah. view movies and mm -hmm. everything else at the resource in that resource. Yes. Right? Okay. Yeah. And whatever, if you if you have a if you hit a, a roadblock, if you hit a bump in the road in getting onto those resources, then you know it, again, it's as easy as giving us a call, and we'll try to get the bump out of the road so that you can get out of what you were trying to do. Thank you so much, Patrick. Does anyone else have any questions?
All right. I just well, you know where to find me. Today. Yeah, more days of she's going to ask more. No, I said she's going to ask more. I have a lot of learning to do. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, so I really appreciate you coming. I really it's appreciate you. I appreciate that. And, yeah. and hopefully, again, we'll get more likes from emails. <laughs> yeah, we have to stop reading that. Yeah. <laughs> no, he let's let's give it a, let's give it a let's give it the weekend. He can come okay. Next. It's okay yeah. with me. Yeah, thank Anytime. you again, Patrick. You're welcome. Yeah. 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 Mark says he has no questions for you, but only praise. Oh, okay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right. You're welcome. Okay, so now that was excellent. I hope everyone enjoyed his presence. Yeah. Uh, we're going to now move on to old business. Um, jazz music program at Senior Center. Um, did everyone receive the email from Mark with the two su suggestions oh, that I, were provided I, I by Pat to Violet? Somewhere here. I, I have the name on that. Have yeah. It. So one was a great day in Harlem. It's an iconic photo taken with the jazz musician from 1958. Yes. And the other one was Jazz on a Summer's Day. It's about the 1959 Newport Jazz Festival. Oh, yeah. And that jazz festival, I mean, it had all of the greats. So these are two suggestions that have been presented to Violet. Um, we're not sure which one she's going to choose. I will contact Violet to find out which one she's going to choose. So then when we do have the August meeting, excuse me, September meeting, we'll know what to present to the public about what's going to go and be shown in October at the senior center. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the photo of the musicians is connected to a program. No, it's a no. photo. So what it is, it was taken by Art King. Okay. And it was so it was a requested a photo of the art of the jazz musicians yeah. and he didn't expect a whole lot of people to show up however <laughs> there was an abundance yeah. of african-american jazz music musicians so the picture was taken yeah. in harlem and in harlem at that time was the, the mega best yeah. of jazz so it's it's a i looked into it and both are, are magnificent yeah I, I into them too. yeah I don't know I I wouldn't be able to choose so whichever one yeah. Violet chooses is definitely one okay. that's going to so be Violet good looking I might just suggest uh pick one to do first and do the next the other one pick another time and do the other one too yeah, yeah. right exactly so yeah. I can reach out to, to Violet uh and see uh if she has a decision on which one and again we can bring that to yeah. our uh September meeting there's also a fantastic documentary on a jazz festival that took place in Brooklyn probably in the 50s Ooh. and it's only come to light now oh wow but there were a lot of uh video and someone has made a documentary about it, and it was an incredible festival, okay. but really suppressed in mm -hmm. New York City. It was right. limited space to, and and the city didn't allow it to be, but it right. was fantastic. And there is a documentary about it, and I don't have the title of it, but there is a jazz festival in Brooklyn, probably in the 60s or late 50s. Okay, so and I'll try to find the time. Right, but yeah. Yeah. Because you're making me think of the one that the documentary, and I think they did show that one. Oh, the, the, the 60s one. Yeah. The 60s um, one. Summer of Soul. Summer of Soul. Yeah, we did show that one yeah. a year or two ago. Okay. Is that, Is that what you're... the one in Brooklyn? Yeah. Well, wait, no, I'll, 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 look it I up. guess, yeah, I'll look no, it up and then in, I'll, I'll it see what it's about. And then yeah. I'll reach out to you, Wayne, to see if that's Thank what you. you're talking about. Right. And then we but, can propose that to uh, Violet as well and let her, you know, decide on which one. Um, so that okay. that would be something we can look into and then report back on it in September. Okay, so you will get back to Violet and report back. So I'm going to get... Yes, I'm going to be in yeah. touch with Violet. And first, I'm going to look this information up from Wayne. Once I have that information, I'm going to email Wayne to find out if it is what he spoke about. And if mm -hmm. so, then I will present it to Violet to see it. Give her three options instead of two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Should we move on? Yeah. Okay. So I did speak with Annie McKenzie, and she will be here in October. 
to speak on right. the DEI inclusion in the school and the services they have for the students. Okay. So she will be coming on, on October 17th, right, the October meeting. Okay, great. Okay. 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 She um, is done, but I yeah. still remember her. Annie? She's done with us. Yeah. 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 She she's on the digital equity and inclusion committee I'm on, and she's oh, such a wonderful person. Oh, she is. oh my gosh. Yeah. She's like a friend you want to hold, not hold, hug. Excuse yeah. Me. Yeah. She's like a friend you want to hug and then sit down. And just like watch TV together, a good movie. Mm -hmm. Watch a good <laughs> rom com. <laughs> the family, just put oh, each other sweet. folded up in our jammies and just watch. See, that's the type of person she is. She's a wonderful person, and she's she's very inviting. You can ask her anything, and she yes. she's just a wonderful person. And previous interactions have always been on the phone. So when I finally met her, it was like, wow, mm -hmm. your face and your 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 persona match. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they match. Yeah, yeah. we're nice. Very happy. Okay. So uh new business, we can move on to that. Are there any suggestions on future guests we would like to invite? Minus October. I know you were talking to me about the woman at the, the service that you attend. Did you ever get in touch with her? Yeah, uh, well, I have, let's see if I got a whole pile of uh, back and forth emails on that. Um, <clears throat> so basically what I talked to Crystal about is that I have been, ever since the pandemic, a participant in a group called a Sensitivity Circle. Mm -hmm. And it's basically, uh, uh, it's put on by um, several social workers all in Brooklyn. Uh, and their business is called the Village Enrichment, and it's consultation, evaluation, education, and psychotherapy across race, diversity, and intersectionality. Mm -hmm. And basically, their approach is to help people to understand that there are these other issues with communication that come to play that have to do with that differences in class, race, nationality, language, age, gender, all these different Things And um, when I first began being involved in this group, uh, they gave a, a slideshow presentation of this, what they call RDI reflective process model. So, and then what we do and we meet is we're practicing it. We're practicing discussing cross differences. We're talking about current events that have to do with some racist or sexist or class issue in the news. And we're, we're, we're practicing dialogue. And their approach is, let's try to change the world on a micro scale. Like that's between people that we see on a, on a day to day basis. We can't necessarily change Washington, you know. So in any case, what I, I, I reached out to them and they, they wanted to know, well, what do we want? <laughs> and I said, well, what do you have? <laughs> and the feeling was that they, uh, the person who responded is one of the three people that are on, in this group, wanted to know if, if a Crystal and I might want to meet with her just to see what we want. She just mentioned because you and I had talked about this. She says, uh, uh, I'm not sure if I was explicit, but the village consists of social work and mental health practitioners who are skilled in this RDI model of consultation. Um, typically, when we come into a group or system, we have an introductory meeting, ask clarifying questions, getting to understand what's going on in the group and identifying what they need. Uh, and then based on their, our conversations, we can draft a proposal. Um, I will pause and say that my initial thinking was that that slideshow that showed their process could be a really great educational tool but I think the way they're reading me is we'd rather find out what you need and work with us, our committee. Mm -hmm. um, but in any case, um, to continue what she's saying, during this meeting time, we can explain more about professional consultation and what that looks like because they do consult with professionals who are in a leadership position where there's these different diversities in the group. Um, 
So that's as far as that I got with okay. that. Okay, that's exactly. You know, I mean, it's it's further than than nothing. Yeah, I know. I mean, what I have on their website, they've got a very brief page that explains the reflective process and these different intersections of race, class, and gender, and whatnot. Right. So. Uh, again, when I brought it up with you, Crystal, I was sharing how much value I had gotten with it, mm-hmm. that I bring it to work with me and in, my, in here, mm-hmm. kind of what I've learned. Mm-hmm. But what I've learned was from both their slideshow and the practice, the component that I've been doing this with them since the beginning of the pandemic. So it's like mm-hmm. over three years. Mm-hmm. And it's you know, twice, a, twice a month, mm-hmm. except in the summer, we kind of find out that once a month is about all we can do. Right, right. So my meeting with them is tomorrow, the next one. So, well, what but, time tomorrow? Well, it's the meeting with our group. But right. are you interested in right? That's in? why I was going to say, uh, if we can speak before your meeting, because she did state that she would like to speak with two of us, um, we can. I can get an idea of of what or how this will play in in, in our DEI in our community. Mm-hmm. You know, to see if this is something that Hadley can have use of, and if not, then it's also great to know that that exists. You know, are you saying that would you like to be invited to come tomorrow? What time is it? 6.30. No, no, no. Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure that I'm sure. right time. <laughs> it's been a month now. <laughs> Hold on. Let me just... No, it's 6 o'clock. I'm sorry. 6 okay. o'clock to 7.30. Sure. If you want to send me the Zoom, I can... Is is there a Zoom? I can go... Yeah, it's a okay. Zoom. Right. You can send me the Zoom and I can definitely pop in. Um, and speak with her, correct? You you would be participating in our group process. You would not be speaking with them about this. Well, yeah, if that's what, what I want to do. You'd like with, to do. To so they would them. want me to set up something with you and me and them okay. to do that. And that's what we can do. Then why don't I follow up and say, Crystal would love, exactly. we'd love to meet up. Okay. Yeah. That'll be absolutely okay, great. All right. Um, okay. Any other suggestions, Sarah? Do you have anyone you may feel is... is willing to come and sit um, and and speak about the inclusion of maybe what they do or how they well, did we mention last time that we would like to have somebody from Valley CDC come and update us on the Econolog project. I would be very interested in that. Right. And and I said I can get someone from the HEB to come in. Yeah. Right. So that's somebody we that didn't have a meeting us. today. Right. So right. we, I couldn't okay. find yeah. out. So, so right. So point. our housing economic development didn't have a meeting today. So that would have to wait until until September's meeting, which means maybe someone will come for November, since we already have someone right. coming from October. Right. Yeah. Do you have anybody in mind? Well, so you were talking about the is that Hadley Housing Authority? That no, that's the housing right. economic and development. Oh, oh that's right. The Sorry. Okay. Project. And right. then yes, we had had. So what I said I would yes. do as well is speak with Reese. She's the commissioner on the housing Hadley, uh, Hadley Housing Authority, yeah, right. and see um, how the Hadley Housing Authority um, is inclusive with the elderly. Mm. That's the diversity I'm looking at. Yeah. Right. And the equity inclusion for the elderly. Yeah. See what plans or, or what mm-hmm. information she may be able to provide to show how Hadley is including the elderly and the longevity of the elderly in this town. Right. I'd be interested in that. I yeah, think they yeah. work also with some people with disabilities as well. Mm-hmm. Correct. It's the housing yeah. authority. Yeah. So it, I would love to hear from them. Okay, so I can yeah. definitely reach yeah. out to her and see if she'll come in on uh, September, mm-hmm. the meeting in September. And if she does, I would definitely email everyone and let them know that yeah. she said she will come in and speak about it. Yeah. Only thing is that she did say she goes to bed at five, so <laughs> <laughs> this, this may be a late day. So I'm hoping that she will be able to come and do it. Well. You can ask. I, yeah. There's nothing wrong with asking. There's yeah. nothing wrong with asking. No. And uh, I also spoke with Officer Romano and asked if he would like to come in to speak about how the Harry Police Department right. is involved in making sure that equity is included in the police department. And he said he would. He just has to find the time. And the way he's like, wait. No, well, we, uh, had him, uh, we had him come in. We had Mason. We had Mason ago. come in. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, you should watch that video. Yeah, that when? When? Um, yeah. Two while. years ago? Three years ago. Oh, wow. Really? Early. Oh, but it's worth watching. Yeah. It was Good. great. Now, see, yeah, yeah. I'm on yeah. the right road. Yeah, you are the, on the right road. The link to the conversation we had with Chief Mason okay. is in the 
If you go on the DEI page in the Hadley website, in the upper left, that blue box, uh -huh. those are the persistent links. There's one that's called archive. Right. And if you click on that, it's a basically just a list of links to those conversations that we had early yeah. on with Chief Mason, with oh, Superintendent with Nancy, Nancy. Yep. with a couple of other people. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are those links are, are they'll take you straight to that yeah. video. And that's what you created yeah. on our website. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but that yeah. was so good. Right. Yeah. So was, you know that that's something that I'm I yeah. well I look at that and maybe we can go in a different direction yeah. if we've already had someone from the force speaking. It well, wouldn't hurt to have an update. Hurt the update. I was thinking yeah. of, of asking him again or yeah, someone okay. representing yeah. Yeah. him to speak this to us okay. about there we go. where we are in the past yeah. after years. All yeah. right. Yeah. Well, well, that's what I could do is reach out to him yeah. then instead yeah. of Romano since and, he's already been here. Yeah. And see, the time that we spoke with him was when the defund the police was going on. Yeah. Right. The whole movement. Right, yeah. so and, there's something to talk about. And we future. left with the feeling of they're doing so much more than just policing. Right, oh, yeah. they need more funds. Right. That was the feeling we had. Right, that's it's worth a good. But I'd love to hear from him again. Okay, to hear yeah. I will. I will reach out to him. Yeah. Or Frankly, I'm surprised he's still here. Um, <laughs> he is such a pioneer and is yeah. doing so many fantastic things. Right. Like said. This guy's headed for a good time. Aww. And I'm yeah. very glad he's still well, here. He's still I hope here, he's right? happy. Yeah. He's still here. He must be happy. Yeah. Well, well, that's those two out. don't always go yeah. hand in hand. But we sometimes say yeah. funds and the and what the spouse yeah. is doing. Yeah, another yeah. part of me wants to keep it a secret how good he is. Right. <laughs> right. But he is he is a an enormous resource for yeah. us to find out yeah. what's going on in the community. Right. And they have <clears throat> real they are really in touch with the community yeah exactly yeah and i'm really glad Absolutely. that patrick reminded right. us that we do have uh social workers now as part of the police response yeah. to people that are in crisis exactly. i'm really glad that we're doing that and because like we said they're right. doing way more than just policing yeah and we need more support of people who have expertise in the things that exactly. aren't really policing exactly and the town needs to know yeah. what our police force slash everything else is doing right. for us. It's right. not just the right. police department. It's, it's right. way more than that. I find myself wondering about our public interaction as a committee. Mm -hmm. I mean, we show these movies and we call people in to talk with us. But I wonder if there's not a place for us or a mission for us to be more in touch with Proactive. the public if there's another project we can do or is what we're doing in terms of learning about our community and what's going on our job is that not the main thing we can do mm -hmm. i am I'm, I'm trying to find the right word i'm not troubled but i'm bothered that we have not talked about for for quite a while the number of minority people who live in and have they and how they're faring and at one point there was a real problem with rent and with finding places to live mm -hmm. and i don't think that was resolved i don't i don't mm -hmm. feel like i really understand what's going on and it sort of pass over it mm -hmm. and not that that's something we can solve but i find myself wondering mm -hmm. about that how do you think we can take steps to i don't know yeah. but i i bring it up because given this committee if it's in, if it's something we talk about mm -hmm. we might find a way Right. To, to do more than talk about it. Mm -hmm. Maybe the question, some question that we ask when we're talking about it could be followed up on and and in a way that we haven't thought of before. Mm -hmm. Maybe we come to the conclusion that if it's a problem, somebody will come to us with it and we're not mm -hmm. going to go looking for right. problem. Right, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good thing. Like you said, maybe something that we discussed can bring about something like a snowball effect or a domino effect and bring more questions and more resources to see where it lies or, or where 
this information that we need to go further and go forward can can be accessed? I mean, that is a good question. We do not know. Um, I looked at how many uh, minorities are in Hadley, and it goes, it stops, I believe, at 2020. There isn't any update. Oh, because that's when the census wow. was. Right. Right. Oh, it's four years ago. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because yeah, we don't do a census every year. Right. In, in a way, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe we're not. It did show the population increased over the years, but I do believe I can check on my phone or maybe it's my computer, but I do believe it was 2020. Maybe I don't think it was. But the other way to ask the question is are there problems? Are there racial problems that we're not aware of that we should be aware of? Is it quiet because everything's good? Or is it quiet because of another reason? I, I don't know. And maybe that's asking for trouble. I don't know. But uh, I, I, is that is that? I guess it, I'm asking. Is that something worth looking into for our committee? I mean, it it, it does take some time. You know, mm -hmm. it's a lot to look into. It know, is. It's a it's a whole lot. And like you said, um, once we have the information. Is there anything we can do about it? Well, other than getting information and being aware of anything that might be an issue, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know of anything. Right. But it, it concerns me that it hasn't risen to the top in two, three years. Well, now that you've and mentioned I don't know it, I don't know. Right. Now that you've mentioned it, however, like you said, sometimes. Conversations can bring about more questions, right. and hopefully, we can have more questions on our next meetings going forward. And maybe this can come to the top. Yeah. You know, some things the lid has to come off slowly. I think that's a question I would ask of Superintendent McKenzie. Okay, mm -hmm. sure. I'd like yes, to please. share what Mark, when I have a moment, Mark was, okay. is diving in. He's saying yes to revisiting with Chief Mason. He might want to update us on some of the stats that they they track. I remember he was oh, he yeah. had stats. Right. I recall he was dealing with their being called out by someone for what appeared as profiling by initial numbers on vehicle stops after right. dark versus day. And then he's just reminding us that he forgot to watch the clock. <laughs> remember well, he I'm watching it. We we were yeah. allowed 15 extra minutes because we had Patrick. I'm, and I'm okay with that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Mark just also just while I'm on Mark. He wanted to know, did you submit for reappointment with the select board? No. Okay. So he's saying I then. I have to do that. Yeah. You, okay. So like right now, if we vote, it's it's the mark and the three of us. Right. Okay. So I'm not official. Well, right. to us you are. But he, he's following the books. Official. <laughs> yeah. So. so yeah. Is that it? So I'm not official. Yeah, that's what he has to say. <laughs> mark, if you have more to say, you pop it in here. Okay. <laughs> So we have an open agenda now. We're moving on. And um, I was just going to mention that uh, Pat got uh, returned her key to Violet. And I believe, oh, so who has the key now? Is it you, Sarah? No. Who got, who got us? Is it, I don't have it. Who, who let us in? It was a meeting it was already open. open. It was already okay. open. And that's oh. what I was going to ask oh. Mark. This way, who lets you in this building? Yeah. Uh, it's me. It's, it's, oh, you'll be here before us. Uh, I will be the one who opens the. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. okay. Because Pat used to open. Yeah. Pat address. is saying yes. that she was issued a key. We went when we transitioned to meetings on nights when the senior center wasn't open till seven. Okay. Her responsibility was to arrive early, unlock the side door, and to lock it after right. after we arrived. And she says, I think with Hadley Media in attendance, the staff is unlocking the building. Okay, so good. so the she's just assuring this so that we can determine if any of us members need keys. Well, that's what I was going to ask Mark. Do I need a key? But if Nick is going to be opening the door, he, we don't need a key because right. we'll find him if he's not here. Right. And Mark <laughs> is saying, I have a key, but usually Hadley Media. This letting Exactly. Yeah. Right. So, right. So, so that's, that's thank you, that's Mark. Fine for clarifying that. So I didn't know. To, so is so we don't need any more keys. No. Is that what I'm hearing? No. Okay. And then the other question was, I reached out to Violet 
about the process of reserving rooms for 2025. And she said, you would tell me, give me the dates. Right, exactly. So I went through, and if we're still doing the third Thursday yes. of every month, right. I can give all those dates. I just don't know about November 20th and December 18th. And this last year, we pushed those up because they're so close to holiday. I think when we come close to those months, we can discuss it then. Fair enough. Instead of so shall I well, just yeah. give Violet all those dates Right, now? I would give her all of those dates for now. And if I anything agree. changes, then we can amend it. But date to actually reserve it now and let her know at least we have it on our schedule i would agree with that do we all agree with that yeah i would say good. yeah reserve through october right and then and mention that we'll we'll have those closer, dates we'll figure out whether it's going to be second or third exactly. in november and december okay, okay so we can look at the third what you can do is give her the third thursday in november and december okay and if anything changes then we will let her know this is what we've come to. We can't make it on that date, but this is the date that we right. can do. So I would include yeah. November, December, the third I, I agree with that. Okay. And it looks like Mark agrees too. Reserved. Okay, <laughs> good. Thank you, Mark. How about you, Wayne? Okay. Okay. okay, so I can do that. All right. I got the key and I got that. We got the jazz meetings. I only have one other question. Okay. Am I, are we... I got this email about open meeting law. Are we are we all supposed to do this? I did a lot of public records training. You are okay. You are supposed to supposed do to it. do it. And I did mine all of it because it's shared. It, but nowhere, we, I'm one of those people that likes really blunt directions. Mm -hmm. Like, please do this by X date. Right. So, and, and I think you this can, was sent to be my mark. So maybe yeah. Mark can say yes. Well, right. You're but we are all or supposed you to. Or can do reach that. out to Jennifer. To That's find true. Out. I did mine before the digital equity, so I didn't have to do it. Again. I remember you mentioning that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Those are all my questions. Training. <coughs> I'm writing this. In. Okay. What kind of training am I doing? The open meeting. It looks like this. Yeah. And maybe you got that email. You should have gotten the e email. I don't think I did. Paper. I think maybe my saying I wasn't going to be here took me off everybody to do it. Mark didn't okay. send it to you. Looks like Mark is typing something. <laughs> <clears throat> And thank you, Joanne, for assisting us with Mark. That's that's very. I like to play this role. Thank you. The, the person who that. communicates. Yeah, you're well. Now we can Mark all it. be here, and Mark can have his um, comments. Yeah, Audra. He's still writing something. <laughs> Mark says, "I may be behind on my training too. Yeah. There's also ethics training required." <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so let's do this training. And the other thing that I have to do is at the town hall, and I go tell them I want to be Oh, yes, you again. want to be reappointed, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah they they it's just a one-page paper and name address. And in again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I'm just, oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, after a morning. Training on opening. Oh, re up. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I just want to say I I want to commend the great job you're doing, Crystal. Thank you so much. I yes. really, Thank you. really, really appreciate it. Your heart is in here, not that ours isn't. Mm -hmm. But our committee did. You've been on our committee, I think, less than a year or about a year. Uh, one or two years. Is it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I go slowly in this community. You know, we yeah. <laughs> have so much fun. I mean. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any closing reflections? Everyone is okay. Okay. So can we everyone adjourn the meeting now? Sounds good. Move to adjourn the meeting. Second. Second. Okay. Third. All right. Whatever. Peace. Okay. Go home. Mark.